Greetings, fellow mortals. Just a reminder, saying it's just my opinion is for cowards, especially when everyone is so opinionated. Now, I love video games. The reason for that is that they're pure fun for me. I can turn them on, put on an audiobook, and play away. The real world fades away for me. My overthinking, story-obsessed brain fades away. I love them as an art form, hobby, and way to connect with people. And a lot of other people feel the exact same way. There is literally a game for everyone where everything just activates the dopamine centers of your brain. There are tons of games with mediocre stories that I love just because of how fun they are. And that's not something that I can say for anything else. Stories always come first for me, except in this one case. But because everyone loves games and there's so much money involved, there has to be plenty of terrible business practices involved in the industry. That's been apparent for as long as I've played played video games, from buying outright terrible movie tie-ins to being lied to by websites and reviews, to having every news outlet and politician blame video games on violence, to Gamergate, God, Gamergate. But I'll get to that, because there are others. Even now, my two favorite games that I played this year so far are Infinite Wealth and Persona 3 Reload. And those games have terrible DLC and expansions. Just awful. Irredeemable bad with how much money they're demanding for stuff that should already be with their stupid $70 asking price. I hate this aspect of it, and just because I love these particular games doesn't mean that I can't point out these flaws, because I'm not a giant douche. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, wait, I, I forgot what I was saying. Ha, what a douche. So there are plenty of terrible business practices going on right now, but everyone seems to have their attention pointed at Sweet Baby Inc. Why, might you ask? Well, Sweet Baby Inc. seems to be a consulting firm. They check to make sure that games are, and this is a term everyone involved has agreed to use, diverse enough, meaning female characters, POC characters, and members of the LGBT plus community. Okay, that's fine with me. I don't have any problem with that. And they're actually involved with games that I like. I thought Sable was good, I love God of War Ragnarok, Spider-Man 2 was fine even though I thought that the first one was written better, and I've heard that Alan Wake 2 is phenomenal. Never played it myself, but still I go off of what other people say in this one. So I don't have a problem with the games and I don't have a problem with the company because I don't think that they actually do all that much. They don't seem to have any real writing or programming abilities. They just make suggestions or give approval to grant access to ES G funds, which is basically a social credit fund where developers get money from specific investors for including these diverse aspects in their games. I think it stands for environmental, societal, and governments, which is a little weird to think about, but whatever. And in all honesty, I'm not insulted by this like other people seem to be. My take on this is that it made me realize how much of a money laundering bubble gaming actually is right now. Fantastic. A really smart decision, young man. We can put that check in a money market mutual fund. Then we'll reinvest the earnings into foreign currency accounts with compounding interest and it's gone. What do I mean by this? Well, games are getting more and more expensive to make because of increased graphics, map sizes, and just the amount of random content shoved into things, none of which matter to me all that much. But the expectations from other people are growing. A small group of gamers are wanting more and more realistic of graphics, and the amount companies are making is not going up to meet the costs. The $70 asking price is more than a lot of people are willing to spend. It's basic product and demand. We're past the point where they can make the most profit, but they can't go back, not anymore. The prices are going to keep going up, and the amount of people willing to pay for the games is going to go down. The costs keep on rising while the amount that they're making keeps on going down. That's why the extra funds are needed. And here's where the actual nefarious aspect of Sweet Baby Inc. comes into play. They're literally a scam, a wall between games and the money. Developers hire the consulting firm for the green light to make the extra cash. And considering how much hate that Final Fantasy 16 and Cyberpunk 2077 got, there might be a little bit of a threat of bad press if you don't get involved with this. So people that aren't talented, skilled, or creative act as the middleman. It is absolutely 
Ingenious. I respect their hustle. I wish I thought of it. Although it does make me wonder if they're the reason I had to go grocery shopping in Ragnarok and play as Mary Jane Watson again in Spider-Man 2. Those parts are so boring. They kill the momentum of second playthroughs. Well, what are you waiting for? I don't know. Something amazing, I guess. <sighs> me too, kid. As soon as I heard about Sweet Baby Inc, I assumed that a Gamergate 2 would happen, meaning lying journalists and lame internet trolls would harass each other. Doxing, threats, sick messages, everything you would expect. And it happened. A Steam page was created which listed all of Sweet Baby Inc's projects. Someone probably saw the list and harassed the developers. Then the developers called for the page and the person who made it to be banned from Steam, effectively creating a harassment campaign and the screaming and the crying and the terrible behavior began from everyone. It's amazing how quickly someone is willing to break their own moral code for the sake of hurting their enemies and really all I can do is call out actions. I don't know people's hearts and I don't know their intentions. Was the list made just to help players make informed decisions or was it to create outrage and harassment? Was the call to ban the creator done out of fear of death threats or a desire to keep the public in the dark about what is effectively a scam? I do not know. All that I know is that the list was public anyway on Sweet Baby's website, so there shouldn't be a problem with the list being on Steam too, so this is basically something that should have never been a controversy to begin with. Stupid is stupid does, Miss Blue. I guess. If people don't like Sweet Baby's influence, that's fine, I don't care. They don't have to play the games. I'm extremely picky now that gaming is so expensive. Unless something is a cheaper indie game, on sale, or a 10 out of 10 for me personally, I do not buy it fresh off the shelves. If Sweet Baby is involved with the next God of War game, I will still buy that game. If they're involved in whatever comes out after Suicide Squad, I probably won't think twice about getting it. It will get tossed away. Inclusivity is good. I like female characters, POC characters, and LGBT plus characters. I also think it's sad that they're being used in a money-making scheme with the absolute bare minimum being presented, but it's still far from the worst in gaming. I don't particularly like when ideas and groups of people are used as shields to hide bad business practices. And while Sweet Baby is annoying and a step back from the actual right direction, at least it's not completely evil like Blizzard, a company so full of controversies about SA and abuse that they've become famous for dropping LGBT plus characters in Overwatch as HR moves. This is not a joke. If bad news comes out about Blizzard, news will drop about a character being gay, trans, bi, or something else. They literally use the LGBT plus community as a shield for their terrible, evil, unethical actions. That's why I won't ever play one of their games. I have not touched Diablo 2, and I never will unless the company changes everything. This is way different than Sweet Baby as of March 2024. Maybe stuff comes out later in the future that I don't know about, but I can only go off what I know now. Who, I am sure, will call out this type of behavior and will never work with Blizzard. I am certain that it's not about the money at all for that company. And as for all the gamers that are so into ethics and video games and video game journalism and video game development, I am sure that they will not touch anything Blizzard comes out with as well. Everyone is just perfect. Yep. Mm, yep. Mm-hmm. Personally, I think the sweet baby system is sad. Companies make overly expensive games that cannot make money, so they need the ESG money. They bring in sweet baby, slap on the absolute bare minimum and unconcerned writing for diversity and then act like everything's okay. It's all about virtue signaling to make money instead of actually caring about real issues and putting in the real work to spread the news, which is more lame than anything else. These types of characters and stories deserve way more than to be a part of a lazy money-making scheme. Name one LGBT plus romance in AAA gaming that is better written than Undertale. You can't. It's just not there because they don't actually care like Toby does. 
And the funny thing about all this is that video games is the most capitalist industry to ever exist. Problems will fix themselves. The gaming bubble is going to pop. They just aren't making the money that they need at the AAA level. They can sell over millions and millions of copies and not make a profit. It reminds me of Hollywood right now. It's just not sustainable. Games are going to get too sloppy, expensive, and exploitive. Gamers will not buy the products. Companies will have to do massive layoffs, which is already happening right now. All right, get lost, all of you, you fired Guan Scram, get out of here, you moochers. I don't want people to lose their jobs, but this game can only go on for so long. The bubble will eventually pop. The microtransactions, live service nonsense, and expensive DLC will kill interest. The expensive graphics will make it impossible to make money. Games won't sell and companies will go out of business. And the only way to fix it is to go for style over real life graphics. Make the game smaller. Do a few things with the gameplay really, really well instead of a lot of things really poorly. So basically be Hi-Fi Rush. But what about Sweet Baby? Oh, that. I don't particularly care. If you don't like them, don't buy the games they're involved with. That will fix the problem. God knows I didn't play the Suicide Squad. But if there's a good looking game they're involved with, like Ragnarok, I will play that. And if you do like them, support them. It's not that hard. Oh, and don't harass people, send death threats, or dox others. If you do that, you're automatically an asshole. It doesn't matter who the other person is. Doing evil things is still evil. I don't care about what you intend. I care about what you do. You're welcome to disagree with all this. That's fine. After all, everyone is entitled to their objectively wrong opinion. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. Hey, do you like stories about an interconnected world? Then consider giving my LP Seal books a try. They are all connected in some way, but you can jump in at any point, unless it's a series. Then you have to start at the beginning. But I got three books out right now, and three coming next year. You will not have to wait long for content. Either way, thank you. I appreciate you. Do not despair.